What is good everybody today we're diving into a topic that I've been wanting to talk about a little bit and I'll probably make another video about this and actually comparing what I'm talking about in this entire video and displaying it for the world to see in an actual hands-on video but I wanted to touch on this and I wanted to get your feedback down in the comment section below but I just wanted to get on here and spew a little bit and talk a little bit about what I'm talking about all right so everybody knows that over I would say maybe the last year or so maybe the last year or so maybe the last two years the Mattel and WWE partnership has went in a in a weird way and there's a lot to unpack there because I think that there's a lot of different sides to this argument because I feel like there are a lot of people that would I, I'm on the same boat I'm in this exact same boat but I feel like people would argue that figures are the best they've ever been while also maintaining that they may be the worst they've ever been in a different way and we'll touch on that as we go but we've discussed this many times on the channel that I feel that we are in the golden era of WWE or wrestling action figures right now they are making the most detailed the best the most impressive action figures of wrestlers that we have ever seen. I mean, you could argue that this is the best era of action figures, period, or toys alike, because we've seen so many damn good figures from every line, from every medium, from every single just media presence that there is out there. Now, toys have been a thing for a very long time, capitalizing on movies and television and entertainment industries alike. Toys have always been a thing like that. They have been making toys of products of different titles, characters, licenses, all that different jazz. They've been doing that for a very long time, and I would say that over time, they have progressed to this golden era that we're in where every single figure they make, not everything is just batting a thousand, right? But they do have some top-of-the-line figures out there, whether you're talking about the hot toys of the world or whether you're talking about the imports or whether you're just talking about retail shelves the best action figures we've ever seen from not only wrestling or any other medium exists right now in the present day so it's just we're just reaping the benefits of all this stuff you go into any toy store man you look on the aisles there's just flooded nonsensical amounts of of WWE or just action figures alike. So, with all that being said, and talking about how damn good the figures are, I feel like, I feel like, now I know that this is just feelings, but I don't know, I feel like there's some proof to it, and we'll get into some of the different aspects of this. I think that some of the figures have been kind of bummy. They've been kind of bummy, and I say that in different ways. I've had to review a lot of action figures over the last few weeks or so. If you go back on the channel, there's been a ton of reviews. Like, different sets coming in, and different this, and different that, and the quality of the the figures, I feel like, has taken a dip, man. It's taken a dip, and it goes back to a few different aspects I want to get into. We can start things off, man. If you go back way back in the Mattel days, like 2010 through about 2015, 16, I'd say right up to 17. I'll say up to 17 because I think there's a slight change there, which we'll get into as well, which kind of might kind of play into, at least elements of it might play into today's deal. But I'd say from the beginning of Mattel until about 2016 or so, the figures felt so good in hand. And I know you'd get some random ones like the Elite One. One Rey Mysterio's of the world where they have the pine cone joints and they're a bit stiff. I know that happens, but I would prefer that stiff over the other things that we've been witnessing. But what I'm talking about in 2017 is when they made that shift. You remember when they changed basics for the worst? I've talked about that. Ba I did a whole video on that basic set. The basic set that changed everything and, you know, they had the really stiff legs and it was, you know, they changed the articulation on the arms, they changed the articulation on the boots, and it was just absolutely god-awful. You remember that? I feel like we may be seeing something similar in today's day and age. And I know we could talk about the shift from that crappy era of basics into the new wave of basics, which is a lot better. We saw it, but not this past year at Comic-Con, not 2024's Comic-Con, but 2023 San Diego Comic-Con when they introduced the new basic waves of the world with the, you know, the Leonardo da Vinci Roman Reigns and and they talked about, you know, all the new articulation they're adding back to basics and how everybody was excited about it. That was a great step forward. But you can say that legs right now are hella stiff. And I know it's not just legs, but I think legs are the biggest thing. But what I was saying, man, is I've been reviewing a lot of figures here lately, and any figure that comes in that has pinless joints, over the last couple years, we've been talking about pinless joints. Pinless joints are a nightmare, and I even interviewed Steve Ozer at San Diego Comic-Con, and I asked him about the pinless joints, and he said they are, you know, they're exper experimenting with it, they're working on it, you know, it's a brand newish deal, so they are trying to figure out the, you know, the Jimmys and Joes, the whims and the woes of the whole situation there and they're trying to figure out how to make those things better. But I think anybody would tell you if you've if you've you know gotten a new figure from WWE and Mattel and you've posted around and it has pinned in joints. So like any elite or ultimate or whatever from 2010 up to current day, any elite that has pinned joints, the legs like double jointed knees are pretty buttery smooth, I would argue. I mean, you get your you know, you get your one offs or your your bad apples every single time. You know, from here and there you do get that. But I would say consistently across the 
board. Any figure that has pin joints for the knees is buttery smooth. And you can even argue that the ones for the arms too, the ultimates that have pinned in arms, the elites that have had the pinned in arms, for the most part you get a very good action figure. I would say the biggest looseness that we ever saw from action figures or I've seen from WWE and Mattel is usually going to be your torsos, you know, when you have that like swinging gate torso that's just, you know, it's like floppy almost, and then shoulders, shoulders not holding arms in place. I think that's usually what you see looseness out of, but any arms back in the day that had pinned in joints or double jointed knees, those were killing it, man. Those were absolutely killing it, and when they moved to the double jointed pinless, the arms I find are pretty much, pretty on par with the pinned in arms. I don't really find any tight arms in that way, but when you get down into the knees, man, it is abysmal. They are way too damn tight. They're way too tight. And it has entered into a different era now where I thought that was going to be the only issue that they had to solve, which kind of inspired this video. But I would say that now it's like even ball joints aren't even tight anymore. They switched the ball joints to this like, I don't know, sort of this like combination fusion type deal of a ball joint and a pine cone joint. And it's created really, really stiff legs, not just in the knee department, but just kicking the leg forward is insanely stiff. Trying to do a damn split with the figure, which I know not everybody cares about, but it still adds to the feelness of the figure. If you take an elite from, I'd say even two years ago, or hell, even some, some figures that are coming out, it's not every single figure because not every single figure has made the transition. I'll just use this as a as a different example. If you take the Rey Mysterio Ultimate from Ultimate Edition Series 23 or you take the LA Knight, those legs move around pretty freely. But I will say, all the ones that I've gotten in here recently, the Royal Rumble Elite Set Cody Rhodes, you talk about the Seth Rollins from the new WrestleMania 41 wave with the Build-A-Figure Howard Finkel, those figures right there from those sets are are insanely stiff. They're they're incredibly stiff. They are not buttery smooth at the at the slightest. And I know when we looked at the promo images of that Royal Rumble Cody, I even stated it in the video that I was afraid that this figure would be trash or that it would be really hard to articulate based off the photos because you could tell in the photos that they had a hard time posing that figure around. And it kind of leads back to everything we've been discussing in this video that I think that We've entered into this new era now where figures are so good, but they're also crap because they feel like dog shish in the hand. And when I'm saying they feel like dog shish in the hand, I'm referring to these brand new Elite Waves that I've reviewed over the last couple of weeks. And it stinks because I think they said something about them switching factories, and that's why we're seeing so many different things play out this way. We saw the introduction of all these new boots and these new foot molds. I think, and this may not be a conspiracy, this may just be a straight up fact, I think when they switched their factories from China to Vietnam, apparently that's what, there's like a kind of a craze on social media going on right now in the wrestling action figure community. I've seen a lot of people post about it, how the factories have switched over from China to Vietnam and it's created all these issues. I don't know if that's the, the exact case or if that's, you know, exactly what's taking place, but it would make sense that, you know, they, let's say, let's say they lost a deal or they lost this, uh, contractual deal here with a factory in China or any factories in China between Mattel and China, the manufacturers and the people that actually create the figures themselves. What if they had a fallen out or they didn't renew the deal? So they had to flip their factory to somewhere in Vietnam to continue to make the figures. And that's why we're getting these brand new things because maybe this new factory can't make boots like they used to. Maybe their boot mold is a little slightly different. Maybe their legs are a little bit slightly different and everything like that. I think that may be what we're seeing playing out in real time right now. Now, and that's why we have our brand new boots coming that are all different. They had to change the feet and all these things because they're dealing with a brand new factory. And I think that's exactly what we're seeing right now. And I think that some of the quality that we've come to know from WWE and Mattel for the last 12 to 14 years, whatever the case is, I think that we have seen a slight dip in that because of these things. And I think I'm onto something right there. I think that actually may be something that's taking place right now. And you can, I know that we've had new articulation. And I think, I think the boots thing will work itself out. I think they are going to say, but I will say when we do look Harrison between some different figures over the different years, again, that's another video that I want to do, which I mentioned at the very beginning of the video. I do want to do a hands-on thing where we take figures from different eras of Mattel WWE and compare them so you can kind of see what I'm talking about in real life so you can kind of exactly see with your own eyes and witness what I'm talking about but if you've bought any of these brand new figures I know you have to have some sort of story down in the comment section below I've seen it posted everywhere and we're not even getting into like all the different re-releases that we see I think that there's kind of a give and take there which we've touched on multiple times over the last couple of years but I think that 
again, man, th I think they switched factories, and I think it has created all these different issues that we're seeing here with not only pinless joints, but the new boots that we talked about, the ratchet ball joint medium that's creating these very stiff legs. You throw that on top of other things, and I also think it's why maybe we're missing some details that we weren't missing before. I think, you know, if you look at some of these new Seth, Seth Rollins figures that have come out, especially the pink one from WrestleMania 39, the chest hair decal looks very dark compared to what it used to look like, and he's missing his back tattoo, which is the second Seth Rollins this year, maybe the third. I could be wrong there. It, it may just be two, but that is the second Seth Rollins I know for a fact that is missing his back tattoo. So is that another issue that we're seeing there? I've also found that a lot of interchangeable hands are very loose, which I think has always kind of been a problem sometimes, but I don't know. It seems like it's happening more often, but I don't know. Maybe these are just some kinks that they got to work out over the last few years, switching factories, dealing with all these things. But I want to know what you think of all this down in the comment section below. And I just felt like, you know, usually when I have an idea like this or like I have a topic in my brain, I have nobody to discuss it with, right? I don't have like a, I don't have a community of people around me that I could just go talk to about it with. So I like to go to the channel and then spew my thoughts here and then let you, you let you give me feedback down in the comment section below. And you can tell me what you think there. So I just want to get on here and talk about it a little bit today for today's video. And I want to know what you guys think. Am I crazy? Am, am I just a lunatic? Am I a conspiracy theorist? You can let me know all of your thoughts down in the comment section below about all these different things. Pinless joints, non-pinless joints. What do you think about the factory deal? What do you think about brand new figures? Do you think they've taken a step back? Do you think they've taken a step forward? What do you think? I think it's a little bit of both. I think two things can be true. I think that we could be living in some of the most detailed, greatest action figures we've ever seen, while also maintaining that some of the quality and some of the other issues have risen because of this switch. But you can let me know all those things down in the comment section below, man. But a huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. I appreciate you fellas so much. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support. But I'm getting the hell out, man. I'm about to pass out. I'm exhausted. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.